out this month. They've started to use things like, you know, the Fizz top, the Echo jungle, neither of which really worked out for them last week. They couldn't get really get to the back line, couldn't assassinate, couldn't really pull off the, uh, you know, the objective of the team composition in general. Let's yeah. See how they start out this time around. Alistar, no, no stranger to the ban list there. Yeah, sure. He's the kind of widely considered the best support in the game right now. Rise similarly considered a very great top lane. The Vladimir ban away for most likely Seraph as well. So a lot of typical things going on. Um, and I do want to keep seeing how these teams evolve their various styles. I know when Incarnation came in, he was talking about the fact that he wanted to be a big playmaker, this sort of assassin -y type player. And he started doing it a little bit. Uh, kind of, right? But like all he's played still is Varus, Azir, Victor, and Kog'Ma. The default <laughs> mid to long range team fight mages, but this is a guy known for like making the, the big like Fizz and Zed type of plays. And I mean, it's the style they clearly want from Incarnation and maybe he's getting good at it, but it's just interesting to see him having to, ad him having to adapt his style. The Gragas band into the first pick of Rek'Sai gonna be the grab here for a cloud nine. It looks like they've pinched the jungle. All right, so they've been able to edge out, uh, get one of the top tier junglers. There's still a lot of viable junglers. So yeah, even though Rek'Sai and Gragas kind of king and queen of the jungle right now, it's not a very long drop to the next tier of junglers. And even with that, Kez is known for his Evelyn play, someone we've seen plenty of teams happy to pick up as well. And just yeah. like that, Sivir comes through, Nar comes through, the Callista bans there, so there's not even a good lane matchup against Sivir anymore. And uh, yeah, I have to see how the rest of these picks come through, because it looks like TDK are getting plenty of good things themselves, but Medias on Rek'Sai could definitely have an impact. Yep, definitely a good start uh, for TDK so far in the pick span. Seraph as well on another champion uh, that he can have a really high impact on. If Narkin gets an early lead in the lane, uh, even if it is Rumble, Balls, uh, oh never mind, it's banned, so no Rumble for Balls. Yeah. And we'll see, Fizz does come through again though, so you talked about the, uh, the Fizz top, you know, the attempts for Balls to go for something pretty Exciting, it's going to be happening here again for him. So Fizz into Nara, it doesn't sound like a great matchup, especially early game, but they might have something I don't. Meanwhile, Andy picked up here, assuming for elimination. Cloud9 able to start some fights for sure. All right, yeah, so they do have some good initiation. A lot of good early pressure here. The roam of Annie plus Rek'Sai is very, very potent early game. Mm -hmm. So Meteos and Lemonation are set up to make some good plays. The only thing is that support roams often Yes, you get the back timing roam, but they're often facilitated by shoving your lane in. It's so hard to gain that control versus a Sivir lane who can just annihilate a wave with two abilities. Yeah, true. Wave clear, definitely a strong defensive thing to have. Team Dragon is not going to pick up Echo for themselves. We'll see if that ends up being for Man Cloud or for Kez, as they've saved their fifth pick to be a bit of a flex here. But Sivir Thresh definitely a strong duo lane to show up against whatever C9 ends up bringing. Yeah, pretty safe. Uh, oh, so Sneaky uh, going to be playing the Ash again. Mm -hmm. Let's see if he can combo. No, I actually talked to Sneaky uh, before the game about the Bloodthirster Ash build we've, we've been seeing from Doublelift. <laughs> and Sneaky actually had some, some really <laughs> uh, encouraging things to say about it. So my thrust was that Infinity Edge is a lot more damage, getting yeah. through front lines really hard. Sneaky said that he feels like AD carries right now are much more about staying alive because all these backline reaching champions that if you can just kite out and survive with a Bloodthirster, then you're fine. He's a fan of Bloodthirster first, Ash. Right, that's what other champions as well. Yeah, that's what I was saying with the Ash. Just because there's so much control in her kit, mm -hmm. uh, especially you feel it as a jungler when trying to go gank her. If you can't kill her in your initial dash and you, you run out of gap closers, then you are just boned. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do anything else there. So all right. having the Bloodthirster, especially since he does have um, the uh, very quick attack speed and activation of a Q. Yeah. Feels pretty good. All right, so we're gonna see if Sneaky does go for that build incarnation back on his Victor for another time here. Cloud9 looking like a pretty standard composition. Balls, looks like he will not be going for the Cinder Hulk build though, just the Ignite here, not the Smite. Worth pointing out. Meanwhile, TDK just a pretty standard team fight composition. Nara and Echo for some crowd control, Azir for some backline damage, Saber to help out. Yeah, as far as, you know, I guess we're talking about uh, item builds. I Balls did this last time as well, last week on the Fizz, and I'm definitely a big fan of Ignite Teleport Fizz. I hate Cinder Hulk on top laners that are not gonna build full tank. The item is terrible. If you don't build extra HP, it's just not an efficient way to go. If you wanna go tanky Fizz with cooldown reduction, then go ahead, just build more efficient items.
Yeah. There are, they are out there. Do it with Ignite. They do exist. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's what Kobe was going to say about this one. It is going to be Ignite, I'm pretty sure, at the very end of the day for that phase pick of balls. Either way, guys, fire up Twitter and share your thoughts on this match. Send hashtag C9win or hashtag TDKwin to at LOL Esports. We'll check in to see who you think is going to be victorious as we get ourselves into the game. And all 10 players loading on in here. It's going to be a fun one. C9 sitting on only two wins for this play. This is the last team that they have to play in the first half of it. They've got nine more games after this one. Can they end the first half of the split with a couple of victories? TDK looking for their first win, having through the split themselves. Yeah, Cloud9 still with uh, a lot of work ahead of them, even though they are facing this winless sub-squad mm -hmm. of TDK. This, this, if they lose this game, then that will be, that will definitely be the last try and things will have to change. Well, Lemon is cautiously optimistic that Cloud9 can turn this season around. Let's take a listen. So we've been getting pretty destroyed in the first split. We have a very bad record, the worst we've ever had. And so far it's not looking that great. <laughs> I, I would say that our games, our most recent games at least have been improvements among our, uh, our terrible early games, but we, we still have so much to work on and hopefully we can pull it together. <laughs> That's that's, that's of honestly kind of depressing. <laughs> yeah, actually. Whew. Yeah, you, I mean, it's funny because I don't really feel like there's a team in North America that's completely happy with their play at all this entire split. Yeah. Even the teams at the top are fairly uh, discouraged right now. Yeah. So it's uh, kind of a uh, common thing among North American teams. Everybody knows they have a lot of room for improvement. Mm -hmm. They're all looking for it, but Cloud9 definitely the ways to go. Well, early game gold lead for Cloud9. Video set up to carry. Yeah, we'll have to see if the Cloud9 improvement does happen soon. Right now, their their rank matches their uh, team name, unfortunately. And we'll see incarnation. Looking to battle Man Cloud in the mid lane. Cloud9 going to be looking at standard lanes for themselves. Krug start with the duo lane, similar for TDK, going to start Gronk. Yep, so both bottom lanes will get uh, the extra experience. Let's see who gets there quicker, though. Annie Ash feels like it should be pretty decent at taking it, although they will take a lot of damage. Yeah, TDK just as fast. All right, so very, very even setup. Now, whenever we have standard lanes, uh, I like to set it up early on. Uh, the uh, collapse down to bottom lane because you really need to coordinate with the rest of your team uh, mid laners, junglers, and bottom lane. Oh, Ooh, wow, that, that hit! It landed. The boomerang blade as well. Lamation already at half HP. Ignites traded though, and they turn back on a smoothie. C9 looking for the chase kill. Another crit sneaky. Gonna turn on to Latman, but it's still a 2v1. Latman's Q gonna do a bit of damage. Just a heavy trade on both sides. Very, very close still down here with uh, low health bars. That means this is gonna attack a lot of jungler attention. There is blood in the water. Bottom lane is are just sitting on trinket wards at this point. They're very easy to track. And Meteos is one, one of the most flexible ganking junglers in the game right now. And he's already on the way over. He, I believe, didn't see the trigger ward come down because he was burrowed. If that was a land yep. shark, he'd have been okay. So Medios realizes that he's spotted and goes, okay, well, I'll trigger it for you guys. Be so back they, later. The thing is, I talk about trinket wards being really easy to track. They see them hover to that side of the lane. All right, well, the window has passed. Didn't quite track it well enough. And Cloud9 are not going to pull off any sort of gank bottom. Medios heads back towards mid, where there is yet another ward. And Man Cloud will play accordingly. Yep. For his vision, Man Cloud is awarded life for now. No kills <laughs> coming through. And Medios is going to. It's going to cost him a bit of time. Yeah. Slow down his jungle clear, whereas Kez just went back, has the first recall, so he's already back out on the battlegrounds with a pink ward to drop. Mm -hmm. This is actually one of my favorite spots to put a pink ward. Um, uh oh Elimination with the early roam, because they have been able to shove up. So the Cloud9 bottom lane, not comfortable with sitting low health uh, down there with TDK. Ooh, nearly lands a stun. Pink ward gone. Looks like C9 knows your favorite spots. Yeah, really does pay off. Um, 
yeah. Anyway, uh, that spot is a, definitely a favorite just because it's usually very defensible, um, even more so in solo queue, so maybe more value there. But uh, bot Cloud9, they shove up early for the recall just to get an extra uh, Doran's Blade and more potions. So very potent uh, return to lane here for Ash. Yeah. Sivir's done the same as uh, Lapman and Smoothie return back to lane. It was definitely a nice play by Lemon and Medius, though. They had kind of coincided the recall and the buying couple of wards. They, they went together to sweep and yeah. get rid of the pink, put the new green ward down. They were able to track Kez pretty reasonably. It, it's a nice little coordinated play. You're definitely seeing these these glimmers of what the old Cloud9 was like. Oh my god, that was close. Might have been killed for it. Yeah, Elimination coming real close to that hook. Got his stun ready, though, for another exchange. Last time, remember, Hook landed, and they gave as good as they got in the exchange. TDK have to be uh, a little wary in the really early stages when going for those hooks into the minion wave. Mm -hmm. um, from that point, this point on in the game, though, it gets much, much less important. Now keep in mind, neither team can really accurately track the enemy jungler, so lane ganks can always be a possibility. True. C9 had just had that wave pushed up, so there's no way of knowing that Midas isn't in the brush down there. Yeah, That's lane the ganks, though, lane, though. Lane ganks are even more important with a fresh lane, because you can come at any time, and there is yeah. legitimate kill threat there due to lantern assistance. So even though Echo not quite as strong a gating, ganking kit as Rek'Sai, the Thresh more than makes up for it, so... Mm -hmm. Both teams on their toes in the bottom lane. And again, top lane teleports, you have to track those as well. So if one of the top laners can get a health lead, it can actually have uh, ramifications for the bottom lane. Here comes Midos. Notice he has the Raptor buff from smiting that uh, Wraith camp. So he knows there's no ward this time. Wow. Double knockup. Double stun and a double knockup. And that's the easy kill picked up on a smoothie. The flashless support. Latman runs away. Nothing they could have done. So well played by C9. Another stun lands on a Latman. The flash knockup. The Dulo. He's gonna live. <laughs> I think a minion blocked volley there. <laughs> yeah, ignite was used to gain the first kill, so there was no ignite on Thresh. And uh, small burn, not quite enough to get it there. Cloud9 though do get all the summoners out of Sivir. So an option for targeting. Now, it is a Thresh lane, of course, so always wary of going for the AD carry first in those instances. But no flashes for the AD carry, nonetheless, and Stinky's flash will be coming back up. Remember, this is also an Ash lane, so no summoners on your AD is a pretty big thing. That flash from Lemon, there's no time. They chain the CC perfectly, get the full duration there, and Smoothie cannot react. Right that makes a big greedy there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I guess there isn't even a red buff on Meteos for any sort of burn. And this minion right there blocks the volley. Oh! The Ash rework made him not die. I feel like that one might have been blocked anyways before the rework. Shh. <laughs> but there's, a, there's <laughs> one arrow side right, by side. It right? was right in front. Okay. Yeah, because it doesn't block more than one arrow <laughs> until 5.09 or whatever. Either way, great start for Cloud9. 800 gold lead for the team, first blood and more. Mid laner is farming quite nicely. Incarnation warming up more and more over time throughout the split. The nerfs seem to be going away. He's laning well. Yeah, and Midos with way more early attempts at ganking than we've seen from him in the past few games. Now, he is on a different champion, of course, Rek'Sai. Uh, but there have been games from Midos, and especially Santorin, where Rek'Sai just hard farms and doesn't go for as many early attempts, attempts as this. Uh, I think it does have to do with the early aggression that was shown in bottom lane and their willingness to trade. So, Cloud9 able to capitalize on the skirmish down there. Yeah. See if they can transition it into their typical vision coverage because that was really a hallmark of great Cloud9 play in the past, was how they would turn early advantages into complete control of the enemy jungle. And again, it would be that Meteos combo with Lemonation, as we saw early, going for the duo of uh, jungle invades to get down some vision. Incarnation still trying to harass Mancla to make a play available for Meteos. Mm. Mancla did not need a flash there, actually. There was no way of yeah. Meteos catching up to him, but summon a spell burn, and Meteos continues to have such great impact in this early game here while still maintaining a minion farm lead over the opposing Echo. Yeah, uh, Mancloud there just 
Itchy trigger finger. Very scared of the Rek'Sai attempt at a gank, even though it should have been communicated from the bottom lane that the flash was burned. Oh, wow. whoa. They took the arrow three times. <laughs> Very good uh, evasive maneuvers from TDK here to avoid the repeat gank from Meteos. Does cost them their ultimate, but and it glad, his flash. glad to trade those. Yeah, so Thresh flash down as well now. Um, but again, uh, the Man Cloud flash being down, due to maybe not communicated after the Rex Eye flash. It's one of those situations actually where, you know, you die bottom lane and yep. you just start listing all the things that were used to kill you. Yep. <laughs> you would, and you can't keep track of them all. The team's like, mm, come on. Both flashes, both ults, health potion down. Yeah, you're just like, hey, they, they use all these things to kill me in team's like. And then he flashes your mid lane and you're like, yeah, thanks. All right, well, here comes the famed duo invade that we were talking up, Meteos and Lemon, into the enemy jungle, get some counter jungling down, some deep wards down, even leaving behind a spirit wolf to annoy. Oh, and Balls is coming too. Man Cloud, how good's your cutting? Kez gonna join in this one. A nice double knockback though. Man Cloud into the parallel buys conversion. some time. Le Incarnation does cut away. They get the kill onto Echo. Everyone else has seen unable to retreat, but now Balls a little overextended. Gonna get the wrong side of that fight. Seraph showing up with teleport does survive and get a kill back. Now Incarnation, oh, the Timbers! <laughs> blocks the hook and Latman's on the wrong side of those mighty. Goes away for no reason. Killed for free, 3-1 Cloud9. We might need another angle on a camera on Latman to see how he found himself in between all four Cloud9 members. But had a difficult time cutting them off. And uh, Cloud9, even though the turret dive not optimal, they do come out with a lead in that two kills, 4-1. So, Mankot here with the ult into the parallel convergence for the double stun, setting Kez up also for his Q. Cloud9 all were there ahead of time though, so it was better organized by Cloud9. Mm -hmm. All right, Cloud basically Lightman just coming up to try and head off the triple, but uh, Sneaky's right behind him. He kind of lost track of his lane opponent there. Yeah, I think he thought his team could have followed up and just yeah. wasn't correct in the assumption. So again, yeah, maybe some improvements still to be made for the sub squad, communicating abilities that are up, uh, especially gap closers, definitely key. Yeah. So at the end of it all, we have a sizable minion lead for the AD carry, sizable one for the mid lane as well. Cloud9 certainly winning now in a lot of fronts. Seraph holding equal against balls, but that's it. Everything else starting to slip away for TDK here. Cloud9 have turned on the heat pretty successfully. A number of good ganks in a row put them in a good spot here. And normally the, the early game, like the gank timings and things like that are things you expect to go better for the sub squad. It's the later game rotations that usually slack off. And TDK not even winning at that. Just looking for the repeat invade, but not able to successfully steal or force the blue buff even off of Man Cloud. Yeah, Thresh just uh, getting some extra distance for Latman. The, tr the sign of a true good Thresh player. Uh oh. It's waiting for your AD carry after they go to Fountain so they get the, yep. <laughs> the extra half a screen. Half the Coming time when I walk lane. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm always so happy when a Thresh does that for me. I usually forget when I have to play support. I just feel bad. Half the time when I walk back to lane, though, I'm, like, looking at the lane itself, and, like, I walk past a lantern, and, like, it's pinged at me, and I, like, turn around and like an idiot. Either way, though, Cloud9 certainly playing a pretty strong game. Up about 2,000 gold. The first dragon goes to them as well. Medio saves his smite knowing he doesn't need it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a great job by Cloud9 capitalizing on their early foothold in the bottom lane. They gain the lead down there by the early jungle attention. Then they focus all the skirmishes around that side of the map uh, and around their deep wards that they got really early on into that side of the jungle. So they're able to grab the first dragon, reap the rewards. Oh, man. Speaking of grabbing someone, though, a nice jump over the wall for Man Cloud to set up the kill with Kez. Knocks down Incarnation. In comes Balls going to back around. Kez flashes ult away as well. The Shark is going to hit him. Fizz comes up. Azir to help the Slozer there. Medios joining in, and Balls will get the kill. A one point at the end of it all. Well played by Balls to so hold on to the ultimate after all of the jukes from Echo. He does have quite a few in the kit, and that was a solid play. Even though the Teleport unable to save Incarnation, Balls is able to pick up the return kill at least and sort of pay for all the minions he lost to the turret and the damage that Seraph got on the turret. 
Definitely impressive stuff by Balls. Of course, Seraph getting some damage might mean the top lane could go down soon-ish. Plus, it means that now when Seraph's teleport comes back off cooldown, he'll actually be in the position to make a play. And we'll have to see if the play there is bigger than just a single kill. That's true. Yeah, we've seen mismatch teleports a couple of times here. Right now, Seraph's TP comes up in two seconds. Probably getting pushed in pretty heavily. Sneaky Zerk Greaves and a BF Sword. Definitely doing plenty of damage here. The long sword he has makes me think he's going Bloodthirster as well. He's continuing alongside that build. Afraid of maybe the echo damage and whatnot. Let's see if that ends up being true, but... TDK certainly on the back foot, 2,000 gold down. I do want to point out that uh, Seraph also bought a very early upgraded trinket. And he wow, Ball's like, going for another tower dive. Wow, a lot of aggression out of Ball. They're going to buy a lot of time, though, decides that dive is not going to work. Echo is nearby. And it gives more time for Seraph in the top lane to push a turret down. Some interesting patterns actually emerging from Cloud9. Oh, there goes bottom lane. Wow, nice flash just in time. They could use an earlier arrow, but Sneaky will not get the kill because of it. TDK keep the turret alive for one more wave. Yeah, just a little bit of missed timing there for the bottom lane there. Holding on to his arrow. Let's see, uh, both junglers come down, so probably will be uh, non non committal. Yep, just gonna clear the waves and back up. Incarnation in that mid lane with the Victor versus Azir. Small lead on CS. And even though they have had repeat dive attempts and repeat pressure attempts from the rest of the team, not really able to capitalize on an early Victor strong lane. Azir powering up fairly well. Azir has yeah. been sort of for forced into, or has opted into, the magic resist more defensive build, though. So yeah. in order to gain this sort of even early lane, Mancloud has opted to go with the Athenes rather than Morella Namakon. Lower damage, more durability. We'll see if that matters to him much as Incarnation. Buying some CDR himself. Forced to flash away from Azir, though. Yeah. And normally I'd be like, ah, oh, OK. So he's also first a Fizz. So he's going to have some more protection for the later dive. But Fizz is a lot of damage. Uh, a lot of his damage is now physical. So yeah, it's 50 50. It's pretty, pretty evenly split. And a single resistance type isn't going to help you that much. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Bloodthirst are done on Sneaky. He is going for the utility focused build. Of course, Incarnation and Balls both have plenty of damage. So he doesn't need to be that main carry for the team. As you mentioned before, the utility on Ash definitely is quite high. Gold lead staying at 2,000. No really major gains either way for quite some time. Top lane killed by Seraph, bot lane killed by Sneaky. So far, a trade of resources. All the ultis, nearly every summoner spell are up, and Dragon spawns in two minutes, so maybe that's when we see our next big fight with every spell available. All right. Well, Cloud9 already going to swing Sneaky and Lemon up to the mid lane to try and pressure, but again, the Silver Wave clear is ridiculous. When assisted by Azir as well, uh, no one shall pass. So he heads straight back bottom, actually. Cloud9 looking for side lane control right now. They have Sneaky shoving bottom, and they've committed Meteos to top, so they just sacrifice mid lane instead of trying to hold even here. And that is actually yeah. huge for Azir. Now, Last time we saw Azir uh, you know, in the Team Liquid game versus the TF, uh, it was mentioned how important oh. it is for TF to... Uh-oh. Good stun. Sneaky doing a bit of damage for to flash away. Medios channels the teleport, and now who's caught? Wow, Smoothie getting jumped on by Rek'Sai and Annie. Kills go through to Medios. Now Kez on the wrong side of the team. Looks like his spells are all down. Ult's back in towards Incarnation. When's he coming up? One second away. He can almost jump the wall. He's gonna now! Oh, man. <laughs> Flash by Meteos on Needed the ult for Incarnation. All that was required. Kill goes through. All Manclouds done a shove out mid, run away, and Balls is on the hunt. So I don't know if Manclouds even going to live here. Revealed by a Crystal Hawk. Goes towards Balls. Shark is on him. Jumps right back over. Kill goes through to Cloud9. 25 seconds on Dragon and map control for the blue team. All right. Cloud9 turn around the aggression from TDK, and they will take back the mid lane advantage here was about to say how important it is for Azir to take his turret so that he can set up control, but it all collapsed there with the Rek'Sai teleport. Having a jungler uh, with the ability to reactively act to blow plays like that, just treme a tremendous advantage. And Cloud9 
parlay that into not only mid turret, but also going to stack up Dragon at number two at 19 minutes. Nicely done. And definitely a reasonably clean game from Cloud9. We're seeing these ganks come through for TDK. There's like occasionally a good play made from the red team, and you think C9's down. And yet every single time it gets turned around, you talk about the Rek'Sai Global Teleport. Uh, we saw the ball, the balls TP earlier when Incarnation got killed, but he managed to knock down Mancloud anyway. Like these kind of things, uh, or I think he killed he killed Kez, but these kind of things keep happening. Cloud9 very good at reacting to what are normally very scary situations, yet making the best of them. Yeah, I think that is something that will come with time from TDK, their ability to punish these small openings, having seen Balls use his teleport, and knowing that Seraph had his coming up, there was a window to go aggressive. Um, but it has since passed. And now they are on the defensive. Have Cloud9 have gained control. Ah. Alrighty, so we're now at a three and a half thousand gold lead. The two dragons, the numbers just keep on growing, even though the turrets are staying the same. TDK managing to knock down turrets pretty successfully themselves. C9 just, again, able to get the better of these fights time and time again. It don't think it's worse. Fighting gets easier when you've got more gold than your opponents. <laughs> True. I know, really, really deep thought right there, but this is what they pay me for. Nice. Well, you do have to spend that gold, so that's a two-part strategy there, oh, Freak. True. You can't just leave people with, hey, I'm can't rich. Just sock can... him with a sack of coins. You got to go buy something with your money. They're investing. Good, sir. And they got to wait the year for the capital gains tax, you know? In real life, though. <laughs> are, we doing, are we doing financial advice in Cloud9 CDK? <laughs> yeah. Well, we good. do have a bit of time. It's true. All right, well, let's see, because Cloud9, they've actually had a little bit of lapse in pressure. Um, they have been able to shift all their vision over to the Baron's side, though. So Taken Dragon now switching most of their wards up into the red buff side jungle around that Baron pit uh, to start some baits and uh, pressure the last outer turret that remains standing. Yeah. This should be easy gold to pick up off the map uh, as they're able to force TDK off. Ooh, good flash by Lantman. Gets away from the Balls Q, but of course Fizz still on the chase. Trinity Force there. Ease forward. Spell Shield's not going to do a single thing. And Lantman gets solo killed Let before her. the Seraph TP even comes in. Balls flashes. Sorry, jumps away. Boomerang means nothing. And there. Wanna cure it? But I'm the prehistoric. That was a high quality walk away burn from, yeah. uh, from Balls as he was able to gain distance away from the teleport from Seraph. Another. Uh, Ineffective teleport there. Yeah. So, uh, pretty much Cloud9 with all of the cards right now. They're able to make a cross map play. Not only do they have the jungler global, but they also have top laner pressure because Ball still has his teleport. Mm -hmm. See what they can do with it, though. I feel like Ball's at this point have got, has gotten to the point where he can really put some threat on towards Seraph. He's a level ahead. And with his three kills, I mean, he's got, I'm going to look at his gold lead. Individually, he's up, eh, okay, only 300. I guess there's not a sizable, like, gigantic individual lead, but Balls really has pressure. Yeah, I think just with how many tools Cloud9 have, they've got the double teleports and they have an Ash Arrow. That's, yeah. that's a recipe for picking somebody up because you have pressure on one of the offsides of the map, and then all you have to do is pull the trigger with that Ash Arrow that should be a pretty much guaranteed engage unless TDK just seed the entire map to you and hover on their turrets. So either way, you're going to gain something. Yeah. Cloud9 right now looking like they want to gain control over Baron Nasher. They've continued to send their teleport holding Fizz to the bot lane. That is not easily matched by TDK. The rest of the team sitting around this. Seraph with a nice boomerang to check the brush, but C9 have done a good job of controlling the vision the whole way through. See what else we can see is Cloud9 playing it very slowly, but TDK giving them that time and giving them that space. Baron hasn't been started, so there's no real deficit here. Incarnation walks mid to clear waves as normal. Easily done here for him, and Magnum does the same. Back and forth the same holding pattern. Sivir will join to the top lane, clear that away. Kez is the one. It's kind of awkward for TDK because they don't need they send to answer balls. Hold on, smoothie, goodbye. Somehow walked through the obviously warded area of the jungle that Cloud9 was still camping. That seemed really awkward for Smoothie. Yeah, and again, the, that amount of possibilities that Cloud9 have for picking somebody off. Annie, Ash, Victor, follow-up. Very, very risky there. 
no threats to have lanterns oh. for anyone else either who wants to play risky. Yeah, you're right. It's a flash or nothing, basically, in Cloud9. Feel much more bold. There come the forward wards, clearing pinks away. All that hard work DDK just had. Super catch the brush and the wall on the other side. Wards are gone. C9 have further their vision control of this top jungle. Thanks for the pick on Smoothie. The ball split is, of course, very helpful as well, as, again, Seraph cannot join this top lane. So C9 with a potential 4v3, potential 5v3, actually. There it comes. TP flank comes in. Three guys only. Actually, no four. As Smoothie has respawned, but Man Cloud about to get chunked down. Meet to get the knockout. Lemonation pulling aggro, though. He's nearly going to die to this one. One more turret shot will kill him, but the fight's still going back and forth. Kez does get the trade kill on towards Sneaky. Ball still in the back line. Goes in for Smoothie. Oh! Gets hooked in. Dies, but Ball's still alive. Turret won't knock him down. It's a three for two so far. Ball's down does even more damage. Kez got nowhere to go. Gets a shield! <laughs> Just in time! Minions! 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 He's alive for now! Don't give up, minions! Oh, you lazy! Two of them turned back! They're done! Where are the replacement's gonna do? Oh, Ignite! Playful Trickster to Ignite. Balls gets the kill. 13 to 4 is a scoreline, and Seraph can only sit there in the bot lane and kill a turret. Well, that is gonna be some global gold for them, but again, Cloud9 able to take out the entire team almost under that turret. Not the cleanest, but able to get it done. Dragon's back on the table, so Cloud9 should reset and go try and secure that uh, before extending once again. Let's take another look at this dive. Uh, Sneaky uses a point blank arrow on Man Cloud to get both his summoners, and yeah. he's burning there. So Meteos flashing on top of him to secure the kill. They actually are left without too many resources for the rest of the cleanup under turret, and they kind of have to risk this one. The hook right before he dies actually gains a pretty big advantage here, but in the same, on the same token, it kind of baits Kez back in. He wanted to go finish off balls. Mm -hmm. And then he goes for his epic run. By the way, that uh, Trailblazer smite onto the minions to gain a little bit of health are the only reason he, he got some time. I don't believe. Uh, so I know it stuns minions. I don't believe the heals that he hit a jungle it kills monster. them, so they can't. Yeah, it, yeah, it stuns them and kills them, so they can't kill you. But I believe the heal does not come through in a jungle monster. His health didn't really move there. I made the same mistake actually like two months ago, and I think Zyrene corrected me. So what? It kills them and stuns them. So yeah. I, well, you said you. gain a bit of health. I thought you were saying it would heal you, based on the uh, the trailblazer heal. Maybe I misheard you. We're moving on. Kobe was right. I'm wrong as usual. TDK unfortunately down four and a half thousand gold here. And Cloud9 continue the holding pattern of, hey, if we prep Baron, we can air you guys and kill you afterwards. TDK do what they can to continue some minion control. Sneaky shoves the top lane, clean and safe. But TDK have the inside track on mid. Sneaky's not going to get there in time in case the pushes keep happening. TDK carve a little bit of the map for themselves they can push around with. But still, it feels like their options are rather limited. This time around, though, teleport advantages are swapped. Last time around, Cloud9 used the TP advantage to win a fight by like two or three kills. TDK have the same opportunity, but it seems like they're not nearly as coordinated to make that kind of play happen. Yeah, as you were talking about, the uh, gold wins wars. They do not have the cash to buy the weapons that they need to win that war. TDK forced to play defensively here. Cloud9 can try and bait around Baron. They've got pink wards down on it and draw somebody out into the open from TDK. Flash back up on Lemon Nation. So it was uh, Distortion and Distortion Enchant paying off for him. They are prepped to make another pick. And now we wait until they do. Because we've seen from so many teams uh, how hesitant they are to try and press in on the second line of turrets. Cloud9 going to continue in that vein and, and wait around. Bide their time, go for the bait. All right, and they're going to go for that Baron. Yep, indeed. Two are going to sweep away wards. The rest are going to just knock down on Baron Nash. Her ball's at half HP. There has to be a little bit concerned. Blue Trigger U sees that Baron is being started. Pink ward over the wall. 2,000 health left on that one. Easy pickup right there. Meteos knocks down Baron before TDK can fully react here. Elimination looking for a hunt means TDK runs away. Went into safety. And TDK on the hunt for some safety. Baron buff means the siege now. Definitely an option for Cloud9. They could easily split and get multiple lines of Baron up minions, but they're going with the five man here for uh, 
some reason. Ah, they're going to wait for recalls. Yeah. They'll probably split up after they go for the recalls. And utilize a couple extra lanes of Baron up minions as they do have uh, the global teleport. Oh, no. Rex eyes all falls down. In 10 seconds and Medios is in 35. Yeah. I already looked. You were going there. I got you. Way ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> you kept talking. I was like, ready for the timers. I was like, ticking down. Like, when you're ready, Kobe, I got you. Good work. Thanks, man. And they actually sent Sneaky, so in the end, All right. it's, it's Ash split foot. Well, the arrow's up right now, so I mean, Globals, he get a hawk shot into the fight. <laughs> Ash has two Globals. Wait, is Ash going to be with two Globals in the game? Double lift would definitely be on board with the <laughs> Ash arrow, and hawk shot is enough to participate in a team fight from across the map. I'll check your brush for you guys. Don't get caught. Hey, there it is. See Smoothie. Global pressure. Stop the recall. All right, well, let's see if Cloud9 can close it out. Because even though this is TDK, uh, still looking for a win with the subs. For Cloud9, it's it's been a struggle. They definitely uh, can't take anyone for granted. And here's the push in towards the inhibitor turret. Not a lot of split pushing done. Ball sent to the bot lane. The team joins Sneaky at top. Makes that turn number four. And the siege continues. Baron. Minions are fairly hard to kill, but they take full damage from turrets, so they go away fast enough. Sivir is here to defend that one. Back to mid goes C9, but there's no minion wave to use. Botlane didn't mean much as well as Balls have a hard time pushing towards the melee champion. Seraph on Nar can always be scary. Good one more time. Medios ults back into the fight after buying a few more items. Looks like C9 are not going to be joining Balls in the bot lane. They will continue the slow and steady siege mid. Another wave comes in. Man, oh! Cloud goes for the big play out of Sneaky. Naga goes back through, but Echo to the back line as well means they will knock down the Cloud980 carry. A 1 for 0. Ult in from Kez going to push Cloud9 away. Lat on the chase. Uh, way too greedy. Goes down for his kill. A double kill for Incarnation. Cloud9 turning a back around off the missteps of TDK. Balls tanky enough to make this dive happen, but a decent turnaround back from Seraph is locking up. Midas had already killed Balls, a two for three overall, still in C9's favor. Seraph misses the house, summoner heal used, Go but pick finally up the, the auto attack gonna kill him off. And now Incarnation plus Medios versus Seraph plus Kez. It's a two versus two solo laner plus jungler. TDK running away from their own base. Medios is that scary. Kez out of mana, he's, <laughs> he's on his own now. Medios no mana, but doesn't need it. Building up Rage, he knocks down into Kez. That smite's gonna give him some health as he aggroes the Raptors, who are now dealing damage back to him, so awkward there. But Kez gets away. Three for three, mid lane turret did go down. Advantage, Z9. So, Man Cloud, gonna get the little highlight clip for him. Yeah, there. that was sweet. Like, very good play onto Ash. No built in dash for her, and he's able to get sneaky into a compromising position here as he walks too close to the soldier. So. Sneaky with a little lapse there. Uh, and he is going to go down even TDK, even though they're so far behind. Um, this right here, the technical term for this freak is tunnel vision. And yeah. that is uh, Lapman running past the mid lane mage to try and finish off the support mage. Yeah, not the most ideal situation. But then Cloud9 with a little bit of a deep dive of their own. And TDK able to answer back here as Seraph goes for the flash play and uh, secure Lapman's target. So if not Seraph, you know? Lapman making sure the true carry of TDK gets gold. <laughs> Seraph 3-0, and the uh, attack damage focus build, the Hex Drinker into Black Cleaver, does give Seraph plenty of damage, and he's trying with his very best to carry. He's tanky enough to obviously not die. So it does become a multi-threat team for TDK, but Cloud9 continue to play well. Dragon number four recently picked up by these guys, so they're only six minutes away from that win condition as they've continued to hold the gold and push lead the rest of this time as well. Nearly a 9,000 gold lead for the blue team, and C9 looking to add their third win of the split at the halfway point. Much needed third win as well. The morale already has been fairly low, as we saw from the little video from Lemon at the beginning of the game. A loss to a sub squad is definitely be crushing. TDK, though, going to press up mid. Balls has teleport. They have to be very careful about wards placed behind them. Make sure that they've cleaned the map. There's one right there on the other side of the Wraith Wall now. Medios just put into position, prepping the teleport from Balls. They're just waiting for TDK to press up on the turret. 
when they get up onto the turret, balls can channel the teleport. There's the initiation. Big stun comes in, teleport goes in as well. Stuns on the smoothie. He's gonna nearly kill the support, but he stays alive. Balls and Meteor zoned out by the Azir turret. No kills for Cloud9 just yet. The kiting away. The Azir soldiers come in. Medio slowed one more time. As long as Smoothie stays safe, he does stay alive. A one for zero. Balls in the wrong side of this fight as well. Oh. In comes Mad Cloud. Great juke by Balls to stay alive. And Lantern keeps himself safe. Mid lane, Azir turret will deconstruct. But TDK winning that fight, actually. Baited and outsmarted from TDK right there. They saw the ward go down. They're like, all right, you can come in behind us. We will erect the Azir turret. In and the glory of Shirima. It was, it, it almost cost Smoothie his life, so, you know, there was definite risk to the plan, but they've been backed into a corner and they need to pull off plays like that. Now, it only does give you one kill. Uh, they weren't able to take mid turret or anything. Yeah. So, small steps, but needed steps for TDK. Trying to fight their way back in. It's partially a moral victory. That was the last deathless member of Cloud9, so TDK can happily right. say they've killed everyone on the team at least once. It's always nice to see, of course. Seraph, the only unkilled player in this game. I mean, best player in this series. <laughs> he certainly, I, I do think, though, I really do like Seraph this split, though. We're seeing that he's still, I think, not great with the teleports. He's still got some weaknesses, but his individual mechanics certainly very strong, and his team is looking pretty good. Just not able to pick up these wins just yet, as they're kind of hoping for a more solid roster, unfortunately. But Cloud9, of course, taking wins they should. 9,000 gold lead, knocking wards away again. Looks like Baron number two on the table. Dragon number five, only three and a half minutes away as well. So, I mean, a lot of options here for a patient Cloud9. Yeah, I think that's definitely going to be the route they go with as well. No reason to put themselves in any more dangerous spots. They have control of the map, and they know it. So it's got to be the direction, right? Hey, everyone, Dragon yeah. Five's up. Just, just be smart. Just wait. We'll win in three minutes. I mean, yeah, and even though it's possible to bait a Baron, they've got plenty of you know pink wards already in place to do so. There's no reason to risk Baron damage. Oh, well, maybe if they kill off Man Cloud like that. Holy cow, two picked up immediately. This is going to be an easy dive for the rest of Cloud9. Mikhail's used on a Latman, but doesn't even matter. It's the whole team getting routed. Ball's doing plenty of damage. Latman flashing. Ball's really wants it. <laughs> maybe more than he needs. He's He'll get him. him. He'll get him. He'll get him. It's four kills picked up. Only Seraph alive, still unkilled in this game. But Cloud9 can knock down at least an inhibitor. 30 to 40 second death timer speed, maybe more. Balls 9 and 2 at this point on the Fizz. They're inside the base, and it looks like they're going to rush down a couple of Nexus turrets here. They're going for the win. The timers are coming up pretty quick. Uh, let's see if they got this one. Flash down on a Seraph. He's a pretty tanky Nar. It's just going to be the game going All down. Right, they, they could have chosen yeah. Baron. Instead, they choose to win the game outright. 37 and a half minutes. Cloud 9 adds another win to the column over TDK. Secure there for Cloud9, able to find that pick with the Ash Annie related to the game. Secure themselves a much needed victory. And it was good to see actually in this one where Cloud9 is up against TDK, that obviously they are a lot of substitutes, but the individual skill of teams like this usually is still fairly high. Right? They're still LCS caliber players, just not a very practiced team. And when you see good individual plays, from Cloud9, you know it was up against good individual players. And Incarnation has steadily been getting better this split. 5-1-8 and eight this game on Victor. Highest damage in the game, highest gold in the game, highest CS in the game, pretty much everything down the line. This was a good game by Incarnation. Balls as well has been having an absolutely horrible split. He'd been losing lane almost every single time. His KDA might be the lowest he's ever had in any LCS split. And you mentioned his scoreline. He went off on Fizz this game, 9-2-3, and three, another really, really strong performance. I know it's against TDK, it's like easy to say those stat lines look good, but yeah. we actually saw good play from the C9 members, something that's been a little bit more scarce this split. And Cloud and Crew, at least he did get that uh, one Azir play that he can take home. Yeah. On the LCS stage, down in gold, able to make the perfect combo to get the low mobility AD carry under turret. Yeah, and that's, I guess, the second is your LCS big play we've seen today. It's it's cool that people continue to gain mastery with this champion. I know, like, when the Insect first came around, like, people, like, spammed Lee Sin and tried to get really good at him, like, even more so than before. Uh, and then, like, it 
we're just getting better and better Azir players who are just like you know, getting better at landing the combo properly, understanding the times which they can do it. Like it's, I just like seeing people slowly get better at a champion over the over the like the months. I can't say yeah. years yet for Azir. It just it's good to see that growth still exists with players. And we're even still learning about the champion ourselves yeah. when we just found out that interaction about if you do it quick enough, you can interrupt your own knockback with sure. his with you his knockback. You can while moving so your yeah. E can stop your own knockback. It's true. <laughs> I mean, that's a tiny window, though, to have that even reach in the first place, but it's certainly possible. Okay. Either way, a good, pretty clean game by Cloud9. And guys, keep it tuned right here. In just a few minutes, we'll be 